How do you make a successful prequel movie? Well, you could take a cue from all these films because these are some of the best prequel movies ever. Let's get started. Many people don't know that arguably the most iconic western of all time, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, is actually a prequel movie. What? It's the third installment of Sergio Leone's Dollar Trilogy, but given the year and events of this film, it's the first one chronologically. You don't get much better than Clint Eastwood and that score. Surprisingly, this film wasn't as well received when it first came out, but now it's rightfully considered a classic of the western genre. If only all prequels could be this good. It's a rite of passage in every young person's life when they realize that Temple of Doom is actually a prequel, taking place before the events of Raiders of the Lost Ark. With the new Indy out now, I think we as a society have been gradually revisiting the Indiana Jones movies, and Temple of Doom is a fascinating second film. It's a little meaner, definitely dated, and just overall darker compared to the first and third one. Both Steven Spielberg and George Lucas would tell you that they were having a rough patch in their personal lives during the making of this film, which explains the big shift in tone. But while it's not the best Indiana Jones film, it's still a fascinating piece of work and one that I think works as a prequel. The first Puss in Boots spin-off film shows us the character's backstory after his many Shrek adventures, and it was one worth waiting for. Yes, it is obvious that Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, is one of the best DreamWorks films ever, but this first film is still a solid first outing for the character that does exactly what every prequel should do. It's a fun time that Del into the backstory of a fan favorite character. There are some films that are so iconic that they can't be touched, but it's up to the prequel to deliver something different and fun, and I think that's what Red Dragon strives to do. So The Silence of the Lambs is a masterpiece of a crime horror thriller, and it won basically all the big awards. A few years later, we got Red Dragon, which is the prequel to Silence. It has a different director with a very different style, and comparing Brett Ratner to Jonathan Demme is like comparing a five-star meal with a McDonald's burger but Red Dragon still manages to be a fun flick, especially with the addition of an excellent Ray Fiennes. I'll say it, Prometheus is a misunderstood masterpiece. Yes, those expecting an alien film from an alien prequel were probably disappointed, and I don't blame them as what else did we expect? But I just appreciate that Ridley Scott returned to the franchise that helped him kickstart his career, and he went in a completely different direction about man's quest to find God. Yes, the scientists in the movie are the dumbest scientists ever, but the performances are top notch. I really wish we could finish out this trilogy. The Godfather Part 2 would normally be higher on this list if this was just best sequels, but it's half sequel, half prequel, so I'm putting it here. What can I say about Godfather Part 2? It's The Godfather Part 2. It's definitely in contention with being the greatest film ever made, and one of the films it's up against on that list is the first Godfather. Just back-to-back -back winners that embody everything great about cinema. They're perfect movies, and the prequel stuff, especially in Part 2 with Robert De Niro as a young Vito cements the film as an all-time great. The Star Wars prequels are just okay, but the more time passes, the more I think Rogue One stands as the superior Star Wars prequel film. It's grittier, more brutal, and somehow makes the inevitable ending still pack a pretty big punch. We know they all die by the end, but as you watch, you keep wondering if they're going to get away. Nope. Boom. Goodbye. And yes, the film was plagued by reshoots, but I think the end result is pretty great. And hey, it earns its spot on this list just by leading to Disney's Andor show, which I think is the best Star Wars content ever. Maybe I like this movie more than most, but I think Monsters University is a top-tier Pixar movie that many people overlook. I think it's not only funny and heartfelt, but it's extremely clever in the way it approaches the prequel story. Starting best friends Mike and Sully off as bitter enemies is a great setup, and as they learn to overcome their differences, the movie delivers a really smart story about being talented versus hard work. Plus, I love a fun college games competition. Who doesn't? The X-Men franchise has seen its share of both good and bad flicks, but Days of Future Past is easily considered one of the best. It takes a very complicated premise involving time travel and works to unite the old school X-Men cast with the past versions of the characters established in first class. Really, it shouldn't work. It has so many characters, and when franchises rely on nostalgia to tell their stories, we're often left empty. But somehow Days of Future Past totally succeeds, telling great stories for almost every single character, and being a really exciting prequel, sequel, reboot hybrid thing. I think every time travel film could learn from Days of Future Past. 
Okay, why is the Hobbit trilogy the last on this list? Martin Freeman as Bilbo Baggins is the main reason, and the second is blessing the world with all the behind-the-scenes footage of Benedict Cumberbatch crawling around like a dragon. But seriously, are the Hobbit films as good as the Lord of the Rings trilogy? No, obviously not. But it was just nice to revisit Middle Earth again. I mean, they should have just been two movies instead of three, but I won't complain that we got to hang out in that world a little longer, right? What is your favorite prequel movie of all time? What even makes a good prequel? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching CBR. See you next time.